I thought it would be beneficial to show you my process for uh, saving true potato seed and the, the potato planting is starting to uh, produce a lot of ripe berries and some of the plants are actually starting to die back and the berries are starting to drop so I thought it would be a good time to get some footage of all of that process. Now this plant directly in front of us here, this was the first plant to start flowering this year and it's kind of tangled up with this next plant over here a little bit and they both started dropping berries so there's a little bit of fuzziness as to which berry came from which plant. Um, but ultimately because potatoes are uh, cross, all of these are probably cross pollinated, especially since these two are diploid, they're definitely cross pollinated. So all of the offspring are going to be crosses. So it doesn't really matter um, as much if you get some of the berries mixed together since I'm not a pro and none of them are going to be identical anyway. So basically all I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to harvest as many berries as I can from this plant. Now the thing about potato berries is they don't ever really look ripe. Um, particularly like even when they are have mature seed in them they still have uh, they're still hard and green and um, look you know like a green tomato oftentimes um, sometimes they'll have a purple flush some of these berries over here on this plant are actually completely purple you, uh, I can show you those later so but then sometimes you'll see like a berry like this, this berry right here is already mature and it's actually super soft and has started to rot and ferment uh, inside the plant, inside the berry. So that those berries are not going to get any more mature, those seeds are not going to get any more mature. Now some of these are maybe not fully mature, but this plant you can see is starting to die back. It's got hopper burn really bad. Um, so I think it's time to just call it because even if I get a little bit of immature seed, you know, the amount of seed that I would be losing that's falling on the ground and dying is more than I'm losing by allowing the seed to just continue to sit around and um, now that is definitely coming from a different plant. But, so. But see, like this one, stalk on that is dead, so there's no point in leaving it on the plant, you know. So you can see there, that's a pretty decent quantity of berries. I don't know if you can see, see how purple some of these are with the anthocyanin pigments. Um, we'll see. Once we harvest tubers off this guy, what kind of uh, color the tubers are. Might be interesting to point out that it's useful to harvest your potato berries and you know let them after ripen indoors a little while, but it's also you don't want to do it too long because two things can happen. One thing is the berries can turn into little mummified raisins and you can still harvest the seed from like a dried up berry but it's a pain in the butt. And then the other thing that can happen is what happened here where some of the berries will, you can see, have liquefied and then, I don't know if you can see all the little fruit flies that are happily colonizing this and the delicious potato berry juice. So these are pre-fermenting here and uh, that's not always appetizing. Um, I'm fortunate in that my wife doesn't mind this type of thing at all and is happy to have, you know, little jars full of uh, 
fermenting potato berries, breeding fruit flies anywhere in the house. She doesn't care. Okay, so we can do a little bit of TPS seed saving because I have a batch of some nice big tetraploid potato berries here which are going to be a good demo for it because potato berries are designed pretty much identically to a tomato if you cut them open you can see there's locules and then there's the seeds you know in the locules and then each of the seeds is surrounded by a packet of gel which contains seed inhibitor inhibitors seed germination inhibitors so what you want to do is remove those germination inhibitors and the other method for doing that is one that Tom Wagner advocates and he uses trisodium phosphate directly on the fresh wet seed to dissolve the gel and wash it off and that works fine I've purchased TPS seed from Tom Wagner in the past and it germinated okay but I've also early on I received seed from other folks who had used the fermentation method and I found that that the fermented seed germinated better and that's just anecdotal I don't have any proof that 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 actually is true but um, I just decided and then the other thing is trisodium phosphate is kind of a nasty chemical I don't actually have any other uses for it and so I feel like this fermentation method is you know basically free the only benefit that I can see to the T trisodium phosphate method is it's faster because it takes a few days to ferment the seed but it's also essentially uh, if, if, and if you have a lot of potato berries it I don't know how Tom Wagner does it since he he does so many to me it's just so much easier to just set these up and let them ferment rather than washing all those potato berries with trisodium phosphate but I haven't tried it either but trisodium phosphate isn't so easy to come across so really you can see what I'm doing here is I'm just squeezing out the gel and um, trying to get the majority of the seed and you can see there's still a little bit of seed left on these berries but most of it's getting squeezed out. Kind of figuring out when these are ripe is a little bit challenging. Because um, they don't really dramatically change color or do anything that really gives you a great clue. So now what I'm going to do, I am going to try and snag a little bit of this seed that's left on the fruit here so I'm just gonna pour a little bit of water into here kind of try and wash some of these seeds down So, and then I can just pour that off and you can kind of see there is a decent amount of seed there and so I'll just pour that in with the rest of them. And so then the other thing I do that is not necessary but it's a helpful trick, this is a finished fermented seed, okay? And so I'm just going to take a strainer and strain some of this fermented juice into this fresh stuff to 
kind of kickstart the fermentation because um, these guys already have kind of the this this stuff has already got going and so it's got bacteria that are already used to eating this gel and so hopefully they can do an effective job and so now let me show you how to basically clean off this fermented seed so mainly what I do is you just give it a little bit of a swirl and then pour off the gook and you can kind of see there the seeds are all at the bottom and then it's just a couple of rounds of give the stuff time for the seeds to settle a little bit and all the other crap and the unfilled seeds etc tend to float off and you're left with reasonably clean seed. Let me get a little more water. And this is just exactly like working with tomatoes exactly so then then all I do is take a little you know cheapo tea strainer I think this is a dollar tor dollar store tea strainer and pour everything out and then I have my TPS seed with a little bit of junk um, processed. <laughs> then what I do is I just take a piece of notebook paper and tap out the seed onto the notebook paper. Maybe spread it a little bit. with whatever you have handy. I'm not suggesting a screwdriver. It just happened to be right here. So there you go. So now this is ready to dry out and you can just leave it out somewhere to dry. I happen to have an Excalibur dehydrator running because we're doing some calendula right now. So I'm just going to set, and it's set at, I think it's about at a, without heat, just at like 95 degrees or whatever the lowest setting on this is, or no heat. Um, so I'll set it on the top tray in there with the calendula and that should be dry very very quickly but you don't have to use a dehydrator if you just set it on like a shelf or something it'll it'll dry very quickly in a flat uh, on a piece of paper like that